In a world where treadmills begin their lives in the gym with function and purpose, but end their lives alone and unloved in some scrapyard, there is little hope. But it is one man's mission to find the lost and abandoned, give them new life, new purpose, and save them from the fate of the Claw. He is Day's Cars, and this is his story. <laughs> Greetings fellow DIYer <clears throat> and welcome to my video. I've made several videos about using treadmill parts to power shop equipment, the advantage being variable speed. The main video that I posted was on how to build your own power supply. But sometimes you get lucky and the power supply that is in your treadmill can be used to run the motor that is in the treadmill. If that's the case, then you have options. There are some things you need to keep in mind, like a pesky little feature called soft start, or the fact that some boards require what's called a pulse width modulator, but these are things that we can easily get around. There are lots of different circuit boards out there, but these are the four main ones that I have seen most often. First, we have the MC2. That's this little guy right here. It is low amperage, so you're not going to want to use it to power a very large motor. And you're not going to want to put it in a situation where that motor might bind up, where it's really going to draw a lot of current because you've stuck a drill bit or a lathe cutting tool. As you can see, there are no capacitors on this, so there's nothing to clean the power up. This is just a basic little unit. It's good for uh, small motors, and that's about it. The one advantage it does have going for it is how you set it up. AC coming in here. You have your DC current coming out here. And then you have three wires that attach here that are your H, your W, and your L. And that allows you to hook up a simple potentiometer and use the potentiometer to control speed. The disadvantage to this board is it has what's called soft start. That's where, let's say you're using the machine and you've got it set around 1,000 RPMs and you turn the machine off. Then when you turn the machine back on, you have to turn the potentiometer all the way down to the slowest setting and then begin to turn it back up to get the speed that you originally had it at. One way to bypass soft start is to put a switch on the H terminal. You break that connection you turn the unit on and then you reconnect that connection and it will go to the previous speed without soft start. Kind of a pain, but it is one way to get around it. Then we have the MC60. That's this guy right here. This, for a lot of guys, is considered quote unquote the gold standard. And the reason is, is because it is so simple to use and it is a little higher amperage and better quality than the MC2 that we already looked at. What's nice about it is it also uses the three terminal setup that allows you to hook a potentiometer to it and power things. Again, the problem with this is it produces dirty power. There's no capacitors, so a ferrite choke is definitely a good idea. And frankly, it's still not as high an amperage as some of the motors that are out there. The next two boards I'm about to show you are, in my opinion, the much better way to go. If faced with the choice between this guy and this guy, or an SCR voltage controller, I would hands down pick the SCR voltage controller, see my previous video on what that's all about, because it's going to be higher amperage and it's going to work way better. Now when you get into these two, you definitely have more options and you're starting to get to the point where things will work better. This is an MC2000. If you're lucky enough to get a treadmill that has this unit in it, I would definitely consider using this board. What's nice about it is it also has the H, W, and L terminals so that you can control this with a potentiometer. But it's also set up for higher amperage. It's got a built-in heat sink. It's got a capacitor so that the power coming out of it is cleaner and is really a very good way to go. Then we come, last but not least, to the MC2100. This has multiple capacitors. Uh, it's got bigger switching transistors, and it is hands down the best 
usable board that I have found in a treadmill. When I open up a treadmill and there's one of these in it, I get excited because this you can use all day long to power your variable shop tools. But it does have a little bit of an issue to get around and that is that it does not have the H, W, and L terminals. This uses pulse width to determine speed. So you've got to get a pulse width generator to make this work. I have here a couple of different pulse width generators. This one up here is totally push button. This one down here has this nice knob. And basically you can power them up, use the settings on them to adjust speed. And what's nice about both of them is they have an on off switch, which is gonna be really important when it comes to dealing with that pesky soft start. So over here, I have an MC2100 board hooked up with a ferrite choke to clean the power. I've got my motor right here, and then I've got a pulse width modulator. Let's see how it works. I power it up, I turn the knob, and nothing happens. This is just as the pulse width modulator came from me when I purchased it on eBay. You can see we have a little red light on, on the MC controller, but the motor is not spinning. And the reason for that is because this is not set to the correct setting. Right now it is set at 100 kilohertz, which is 100,000 hertz. And we need it at 20 hertz, not 20 kilohertz, 20 hertz. So to set this, what we end up doing is we press this button twice and we turn it down. Right there at 020 provides us with 20 hertz. I've got it set at 20 hertz. I power everything on. Nothing happens. Nothing's spinning. That's that pesky soft start that we were talking about. If I turn this unit off and then back on, we bypass the soft start and as you can see right here, the motor is starting to turn. To vary speed, we just adjust the knob. And we can get quite a bit of speed. At any point, we can turn it off and it will wind down. Take a little bit there's a fairly large flywheel on the motor that i'm using for this demonstration we want to go turn it back on we we'll turn it on and it should come on here in just a second and there you go wiring this up is actually pretty simple this is the wiring harness that came with this board when i disassembled the uh, treadmill the blue wire is pulse width the black and white wire goes into the negative pulse width right here. The red wire goes into V positive and the all black wire goes into V negative. This is the other end where it connects to the board and I just simply removed the other wires. So the end one is the black one, then the red one, then I removed one, then we have the blue one, then I removed one, two, three, and then the black and white one goes on the very end and this plugs directly into the board. This is the other pulse width modulator that I purchased from eBay. It uses the same four wires, but it puts them in a different configuration. When we flip it over, this is the unit right here. It doesn't have a dial, but it does have uh, buttons to adjust everything. Now when this came, it was 1.5 kilohertz. So 1.5 thousand hertz and we've got to get it set for 20 hertz so we take it down right there 0 0.020 is 20 hertz and you just heard the motor kick on because that's the pulse width that we need 
Now, to change the duty cycle, you press up here or down, and you can adjust speed accordingly. And like the other one, it has the advantage of an on-off switch. And this on-off switch can be used the exact same way as before. So that's part of why the 2100 is such a great board. Because with one of these pulse width modulators, you can eliminate the soft start, and you can easily control the board, but it also produces cleaner power. So if you have a 2100, it's really pretty simple to wire up. Like I said, this is the original wiring harness with the wires in the original order that I ran to my pulse width modulator. This is your A negative and your A positive. The, those are the DC outputs that are going to your motor. Now, even though it's not required with this unit, and even though uh, machines that use a board like this do not have a ferrite choke, I highly recommend one. It is a fantastic way to eliminate power spikes and have a smoother, longer running motor. On this side, we have the AC input right here and right here. So you've got uh, black and then white. And then this is terminals for a fuse. You can do an amperage fuse that will shut off if you draw more than a certain number of amps. Or if your motor has blue wires, which go to a thermal fuse inside the motor, this is a fantastic place to plug those in. Also with this unit, you have to use a transformer to step the power down to supply uh, components on the board, not to mention your pulse width modulator. And the transformer plugs in here and here. It, some of these 2100 boards come with a transformer actually mounted in this location, and some of them have the transformer as a separate unit. This is the transformer I speak of. It's just a simple class two transformer. It's got uh, two wires right here, which are your hot coming in, and they go right here on this two terminal post. And then you've got three coming out, uh, two yellows and a black, and that's what plugs in right here and gives you the stepped down voltage that you need to run some of these components. I hope this video has been informative. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them below. If you're lucky enough to get a board that you can use, this is a great option. Simple enough to do. Those pulse width modulators are less than 15 bucks on eBay. If you get them directly from China, you can get them for around $8 each. So simple, easy to use, affordable. If you don't get one of these boards, you get something a little more complicated like say, this beast right here that doesn't have simple inputs and is not easy to hack, then uh, I recommend going with an SCR voltage controller. If you'd like more information on an SCR voltage controller, I have a fantastic video walking you through everything you need to know to set one up. If you like what you've seen, please click like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.